What's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you guys how we grew microgreens in our kitchen and on our countertop using these cute pots. Stay tuned for the video. I am so excited to share with you guys these fun little pots that you can grow microgreens in because I love the faces on them. These are two that we already started and I love that this one's giving you a little thumbs up. And then you got this guy over here that's just super happy to be growing microgreens for you, which we actually have some radish growing in this one. I ended up saving my two favorite pots for less. That way we can plant them with you today. The reason why I love these ones is just look at those faces. How can you not look at those and go, oh my God, I love them. <laughs> I'll also be planting these little metal pots here and these actually go to a window unit and I'm gonna go ahead and jump to a clip to that real quick and show you guys what that looks like. So this window unit we bought for our house and that way we can kind of utilize some of our empty windows. And this is in an area in our house where we get a lot of great light. And in this unit, we're able to grow uh, basils. We got some other microgreens growing like radish and I believe scallions um, and even tomatoes. We decided to try tomatoes out in this. So far, it's doing pretty good. I think they're getting a little tall, but either way, you're able to grow so many different things in this and it looks beautiful, which is something that I personally love because I love the aesthetic to all kind of flow together and it goes perfectly with our house. If you guys are excited as I am about growing at home in these adorable little pots, be sure to smash that thumbs up button and also hit that subscribe button and the notification bell over here so that way you get notified anytime we release new videos. So now let's go ahead and jump in how we're gonna begin planting these. Now it's time to plant! So one of the first things that you're going to notice is whenever you're using a pot like these is there's quite a bit of a void that you're going to have to fill for microgreens in particular. So I'm going to actually teach you guys how you can do that and it's really easy. So let's go ahead and jump into that. So what we're going to be doing today is we're actually first going to fill all these pots up here partially with LECA. Now LECA is lightweight expanded clay aggregate and these are basically just clay pebbles and you'll see a lot of people use them in hydroponics or also for propagating house plants and stuff like that. So this is the LECA. And we're just going to take a good handful of that and place it into our pot. I'm going to start with our metal pots right now. So see this pot here? We're just going to fill that up and there's kind of a line in these ones and I want to go just below that line. That way we leave room for our other grow medium that we're going to be putting directly on top of that here in just a second. So with these two pots, I think I'm going to go probably just at the little area where it starts to widen up. That way I leave enough room on these for me to fill it up with our grow medium and also cover the tops of our seeds. So let's go ahead and grab some of this and just pour it in there. I didn't go too high up on this. I try to keep it pretty low, but still fill in a lot of that space at the bottom. So the reason why I really like LECA for this is because one, it will give aeration to your root structure, which will help you get a much healthier plant. And on top of that, you can reuse LECA. You're able to rinse it off, wash it, sterilize it, and then use it again later, which I think is awesome. And that's why I chose this one for today. Now that we have filled these part way up with LECA, our next step is to grab some of our grow medium and fill it another partial way up, not all the way to the top yet though. So let me go ahead and grab that. And for today, I'm gonna to be using some Burpees Organic Potting Mix. So I don't wanna go all the way to the top. I just wanna fill it up just a little bit and leave some space. Okay, that's perfect for that one. Do that for the next. And the reason why I'm only doing a little bit of soil is because microgreens really don't need a whole lot. They just need enough to get their roots in there and get growing. Now, if you're using these pots to grow an adult plant, like a basil, you do want to not use LECA and you want to use all of your soil in this because they are gonna need a lot more of the nutrients and a lot more space for their roots to grow. Now with this one, I'm just going to put a little bit in there. I'm going to shake it a little bit. And I think that is pretty good. And see how I'm leaving about 
about a finger's space right there. Now that I have got my grow medium put into these pots, I'm gonna set them aside and we're gonna get our seed out. For my seed, I actually picked out three varieties that I just thought would be fun to grow and that I wanna eat later this week. And for that, I chose crimson clover. I like crimson clover because it kinda has a cucumber taste and it's really nice. Um, and then I'm doing cauliflower, snowball, why it improved and some mammoth red rock cabbage because I love that color. So what I want to do with these is I'm only going to be using one teaspoon for each one of these pots. The reason is, is because we did one teaspoon of seeds kind of similar to these. I think that this is a perfect density for this type of microgreen. So that's what we're going to do for the rest of our pot. So what I need to do now is just pour this into my hand and begin seeding. So I'm gonna seed this kind of like you would a 1020 tray. Just try to do it as evenly as possible. Try not to clump it and just get them all spread out onto your pot. So I got that one seeded. And now I think in my other metal pot, I'm gonna do my crimson clover, which once again, I'm only gonna do one teaspoon. You know what these seeds always remind me of? If you ever get those, um, burger buns that have the little seeds on top. I feel like these look exactly like that. Okay, now let's just go ahead and do that. Get these all spread out there. All right, so we've seeded both of our little metal pots here, and now I can move on to the cute little pots that I've been waiting for. And I think for these ones, I'm gonna once again do another mammoth, mammoth, mammoth. <laughs> I'm gonna do another mammoth red rock cabbage in the yellow one, because I think that the coloration here would be really pretty to see in that one. And I think that this one's saying, hey, give me some of those mammoth red rock. Uh. <laughs> so let's do that. Okay, move this over a little bit, that way you guys can see. And we are seeding it. So now I have that one seeded and I'm going to bust out my last seed, which is our cauliflower. And that will be for the one that I think is the most cute pot out of all of them. I mean, look at them. That's adorable. Let's seed our pot. Now that we have seeded all four of our pots, what we need to do is take a little bit more of our soil and we're just going to put a light layer over the tops of these seeds. That way it helps trap in the humidity and gets these guys germinating a lot better because if we leave these where the seeds are just exposed, the odds of the airflow in here drying that out are pretty high and then you're not going to get seeds that germinate. So I definitely recommend if you're doing this to just cover the seeds with a light layer. Make sure you don't go so high that you're overfilling it. Like just under the rim is perfect. And just like we would with 10, 20 trays, make sure if you got any giant clumps or big sticks and stuff, go ahead and pull those out and set them into a composting bin because they're just gonna get in the way of your microgreens growing. Now that we have covered our seeds with some more of this grow medium, we just need to take something to water with and we're gonna mist the top of all these and get them not overly saturated, but enough to where they're gonna begin germinating. And I'm just gonna use this little spray bottle here because it's just, it's much easier <laughs> um, than me running all the way across the house and getting our big thing and trying to carry it because it's heavy. So let's go ahead and start watering. I'm gonna start a little bit far so that way I don't spray this all over the place. Okay, onto our Dorbs one. Now that I have watered all my little pots here and our seeds are starting to begin to germinate, what I need to do is literally just take these two cute ones, set them aside somewhere on my countertop, and that way they can just do their thing and start to germinate. Um, I'm gonna be watering these twice a day as needed. I'm really gonna pay attention to see if that grow medium is looking dry or not. Um, if it does look dry, I'm just gonna give it another light mist and that will help these guys continue to germinate. Um, as for these two though, I'm gonna take these over to my window unit, which I'll have CJ come grab this camera and walk with me and I'll show you guys what we do with these. So I'm gonna place this one back in the spot where it belongs and we're just gonna allow this to sit there and germinate. And the only thing I need to do is come and water this twice a day, just like with the other ones. And if I start to notice it getting any kind of light color, that's gonna tell me that it's dry and I'll just give it another mist if it needs it. 
And this is where this is going to remain all the way up until harvest day. That's something I do love about this unit is it is super easy. I just seed my little pots here, place them in the window, check on them. And then when they're ready, they are ready. We also have this Rambo radish, which we planted five days ago and it's germinating super well and it's starting to hit up that point where it's going to start growing really crazy. And I can't wait to see that. We also got these little guys that are just now starting to come up. Look at them. We came up just enough to say hello. And I'm gonna take my last one and place it over in our second one. Yes, we have two. <laughs> and that one goes right there. Cool. Over here, we have a bunch of basils growing. We got some sunflowers that are just now starting to come up. And we got, I think that's chives, right? Chives, no, that's cat grass. And something you might be noticing too on this unit is that there is a little bit of dirt and stuff that happens from the microgreens actually pushing that soil out. And that will happen, trust me. All you need to do is grab some kind of like bucket and just knock that into it. And you can actually take that out to your compost area. That's what we do every time. And it's super easy to take care of. All right, so that is how we plant up these cute little pots for microgreens. And I'm so excited that in a few days, these two right here are probably going to be ready for germination. And we'll start to see the other pots actually begin to come out underneath that soil. And I'm definitely gonna be giving you guys some updates throughout that process. Um, once we start to see some things happening. As for the window unit, we're gonna be dropping a video on that here soon, so that way you guys can learn more about that. So I'll see you guys here in a few days once these pots have begun germinating. Today is day five of our grow, and I wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on with our adorable little pots here. So first off, I gotta say it is definitely harvest day for these two over here, but as for our other four, look at that. We are getting germination. So it's starting to raise up that cocoa core quite, quite a bit on that one, just like it is over on this one here. And same thing with our two window unit ones. So what I need to do real quick is grab my compost bucket. So this is a little bucket that we keep in our grow space and we just knock any kind of debris into it. And then later we take this to our outdoor compost area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little pots and just very gently knock off some of that grow medium. Basically whatever is loose on it, I'm knocking off. So there's still a little bit more left on it, but I got most of that off. That way it doesn't knock it off onto my floor later. You gotta be really careful with clover because it does take a little bit to root. And over in this section, whenever I tried to knock it off, it kind of pulled up a few which luckily I can just tuck them back in there and they'll be good. So as for my four over here, all I need to do now is give them a light watering and put them back into their window unit for these two. And these two are just gonna go on my counter right here where I've had them this whole time. Now I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these two with you guys because obviously they are a little tall. We've had a busy past few days, so I didn't get to these in time, but we don't see any true leaf yet, which is perfect. So it means the flavor on these is gonna be great. To harvest them, I'm just gonna use this little container here and some kitchen shears. Well, I'm gonna start over here with our sephorophane mix. And since they are kind of tall, I'm gonna cut a little bit higher up than I usually would. That way we don't get a lot of stem. So there is a little bit of that grow medium in here. So I'm just gonna take my compost bucket again and just kind of knock off what I can. Our nice little microgreens here. They smell really good. I like how this one looks like it's so happy with its super crazy hair. <laughs> it's adorbs. Gonna grab that here. And once again, because these did get really tall, we're just gonna clip them a little bit higher than usual. And look at how pretty those look. I'm loving the color. Nice. And now I have my little bit of microgreens that I can use tonight for dinner. Well, you guys, that is it for today's update. I'll see you guys here in a few days whenever these other ones are ready to be harvested. Today is day nine of our grow. And right now everything is looking super happy and healthy. And I believe that they are all ready for harvest. But before I jump into that, I wanna take a look at everything and show you guys what these are looking like. These two are the ones that are from our window unit and these ones only received natural light. We didn't put any artificial light whatsoever around them. And I'm loving the height on our clover here. I think it looks really pretty. And this is definitely ready for harvest. 
since we are starting to see a few signs of true leaf here and there. And then when it comes to our cabbage, our cabbage is extremely ready. I mean, look at this. It's beginning to fall over a bunch and the leaves are nice and big. And I think that it is gonna come out to a great harvest. As for the two super cute pots, we ended up growing them here on our kitchen counter where they only received ambient light for the first few days of growth. Then two days ago, we ended up buying this awesome light and we put them underneath this because we noticed that their cotyledons were looking really tiny. And on top of that, they were kind of getting scraggly in their growth. But once we put them underneath the light for just two days, they have improved dramatically. All those cotyledons began to open up like you see here and the growth started to come more straight and just overall I think it looked a lot better. There's nothing wrong with growing a crop that looks like this in just natural light. It's still going to be a nice healthy harvest and a nice healthy crop for you to eat. Really the benefit of putting them underneath the light over here was just to give a more photogenic look to ours and get much juicier looking cotyledons. Using both of these methods was super easy to grow all these. All I really had to do was come out and just give them a little bit of water each day and they kind of just took care of themselves for the most part. I would highly suggest this to anyone that doesn't have a lot of space to grow because this really utilized our empty counter space on top of utilizing all of our empty windows. So what I need to do now is I'm just gonna go through, I'm gonna harvest all these and I'm actually gonna put all of them in to the same container and kind of make my own salad mix. And for today, I'm gonna to be using scissors to harvest this since they are just really small containers and I don't think I really need a knife for that. If you've never had clover before, it kind of has um, a crisp texture, uh, a little bit of green taste, not too much, and a lot of that kind of cucumbery smell and taste to it. It's really good. Just from that one little pot here, that was quite a bit of produce. This is enough for me to probably have about two salads just from a single little garden pot like this. Something I want to talk about too before I begin to harvest these two, because like I said before, these are the exact same crop. They were just grown in two completely different ways. This one right here was one that was grown in the natural ambient light, and it is <laughs> pretty crazy looking, right? That and the cotyledons are just a tad bit smaller and a little bit more sporadic compared to the one that was grown in ambient light and then introduced to a artificial light for two days. This one, the colors are a lot deeper. The cotyledons are beginning to open up more and overall the plant itself is just a lot stronger. Looks like we are getting a good harvest from this. Oh, it's so pretty. Still just can't get over how adorable those are. I've probably mentioned that a few times in this video, but it's just so cute and it's even cuter whenever it has microgreen hair. Look at that. That is a beautiful harvest. And now it's time to harvest the very last one. And it is our adorable little pouty face one that I think looks even more adorable with this cute microgreen hair that it has going on. <laughs> Now this one has a quarantine haircut. <laughs> it's super uneven. That's probably why it looks so sad, right? <laughs> I have harvested all four of these little pots here and look how much produce that gave me. This is a great amount, especially for one to two people. You really don't need a whole lot because what you can do is you can either eat this alone or you can take it and add it into your salads or whatever else you want and make this go even further than just this little container here. I'm gonna get this cleaned up and then here in a moment, I'm gonna show you guys how we remove the root structure from the LECA and get that all separated so that way we can reuse the LECA later. So first I'm gonna use this little compost bucket here and then I got a bowl in front of me so that way I can separate the LECA from the root structure here. So first I'm gonna start out over my bowl and I'm gonna grab a hold of this and pull that out. And then you're gonna get a lot of the LECA stuck just like that here. And all you gotta do is just kind of go like this. It's almost like tickling the root structure and it will begin to release all of the LECA. And now you're left over with just this gorgeous root structure and the rest of your stems and your soil, which you would just compost that. I'm gonna pour out the rest of that LECA into this bowl. 
and set my pot aside to clean later. And then I'm going to repeat this process. Now, when it comes to these ones, it's a little bit trickier to get out since the top of this is narrow, narrower, narrower. <laughs> since the top of this is more narrow than the bottom is. But if you just kind of wedge it around a little bit and get one chunk out, you'll be able to pull out the rest. And once again, tickle the roots to release the LECA, compost the root structure, appreciate the root structure. Finish pulling out any more. Oh my gosh, look at that. Those are very happy roots. Now what I would do with the rest of this LECA is I would rinse this out probably about three times and try to get out as much of this debris that's left over as I can. And then I would want to sanitize this before I reuse it again. Well, you guys, that is it. This is how you can utilize space in your home, grow microgreens, and really get the best out of your space. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the section below. We have an Instagram and a Facebook that are both at OnTheGrowFarms and a website that is www.onthegrow.com. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this video. That way you guys can see more content like this. Keep on believing and have a great day.